My name is Will Carr and I've been making kinetic sculptures since 2015. My sculptures are taking the hidden forces of the world, such as the wind, and bringing it into the visual spectrum, helping connect people with their surroundings, allowing them to feel connected with the natural environment that surrounds us. It's been years of play and experimentation to make the sculptures move elegantly in the wind. It's very easy to get a sculpture to wind vein, so it flickers in the wind, but to get something to move in constantly varying forms has been the tricky bit. It's been a lot of play, a lot of experimentation, watching these forms for years in the wind, seeing how they move and pass energy between the pieces using conservation of angular momentum. They never build up energy and they will vary in all wind conditions. From a gusty day it will do one thing to a smooth laminar day will do something else. Yeah, it's fascinating to see how they react in all the different conditions. Would most people know that air is considered a fluid? Yeah, that's quite nice to explain then. A lot of the forms for my sculptures are developed from watching how air moves around objects. Air is considered a fluid and when water flows over a pebble in a river or how air flows over a mountain, this dictates or creates the forms that are within my sculptures. Other inspirations would include nature and natural forms from the micro world to paragliding. As a paraglider pilot, we have to understand fluid dynamics and the movement of air really well. So we're constantly analysing how air will flow over an object or a tree heating up to create a thermal that we fly in. Watching birds, watching nature, all influences my sculptures. So these forms come into reality often around a campfire and hours of sketching in my notepad, which will then get turned into cardboard, which I then can rotate and see how they would move in reality. Through this process, I have some rules that I've learned over the years to help it look elegant whilst being able to move in the wind. So after these forms have been made in cardboard and I'm happy with the shape, I can project it larger to check that I'm happy with the scale. After this, I take it into CAD onto the computer to start 3D modeling. I'll do a basic shape to begin with, and if there's any other artists listening, they probably know that you can spend hours on one line sometimes. It's really tweaking that, and it's quite a beautiful process, really getting into the minutiae of a specific curve. I then project it onto the wall at the full scale to check that I'm happy with the proportions. I'll send it to the laser cutters to get cut into flat forms, which I'm then able to make the first model. I then put up in the wind. It still has to be made pretty accurately to allow it to show everything that I need to see. I'll watch this for six months maybe in different wind conditions, from strong winds to gusty days to light winds to see how it moves, how each form reacts with the next, how energy is passed from one piece to the next piece. This will inform, can I make little tweaks, angles of pivots, distances between centres of mass, all these things I can think about and try and optimise the sculpture. This will then go back into CAD, make some changes in the profiles, make bits thinner, wider, longer, whatever feels right, with some rules that I've learnt over the years. After a few iterations, I then make the final piece with the highest precision, as well as doing all the wind calculations to make sure that all the internals are strong enough for whichever location the sculpture ends up at. Sculptures that end up in America will have massively high wind loadings compared to a UK sculpture. A background in engineering has allowed me to do the wind loading calculations on these sculptures. It helps inform my play, as well as allowing me to create high precision parts.